In this video, we introduce hydraulic limes, also referred to as natural cements and historically named Roman cement for marketing reasons, although they have nothing to do with cements used during the Roman Empire. In a separate video, we explained that Roman concrete relies on a chemical reaction between slaked lime, pozzolana as volcanic ash, and water. Hydrated phases precipitate and increase the volume of solids, which explains their setting and hardening. Good pozzolans are only available in limited amounts and locations, so their supply dropped at the fall of the Roman Empire, probably an important reason for the loss of mortar quality over the subsequent centuries. In the late 18th century, and along with the Industrial Revolution, serious efforts developed to improve the quality of mortars, and Roman concrete was often defined as ultimate reference. In particular, its ability to set underwater was in great demand for important harbour constructions of the time. In 1756 already, a British engineer named John Smeaton, now often considered as the father of civil engineering, was commissioned to rebuild the Eddystone Lighthouse off the coast of Britain. For this, he was determined that if the building would not give way to the sea, the sea must give way to the building. Striving for this, he reached two important conclusions. First, that porcelains are highly beneficial. In fact, he used volcanic ash from Italy, somehow rediscovering Roman mortars. Second, Smeaton understood that clay impurities greatly increase the performance of burnt lime. This was published in 1791 and represents an important contribution to further cement developments. As to Smeaton's lighthouse, it was a success and remained in place for close to 100 years, after which it was replaced by a larger one and moved to Plymouth Hoe in beautiful South Devon, where it has become a city landmark. Some years after Smeaton's publication, in 1796, James Parker, a British clergyman, discovered that very good limes could be obtained by calcining natural nodules of chalk and clay, known as septaria or cement stones. The product obtained could react underwater, explaining the terminology of hydraulic lime. Obtaining this behavior requires using rocks with the right proportion of limestone and clays, explaining the term of natural cement. Parker was not aware of this and for marketing purposes branded his discovery Roman cement, which is confusing since his material has little to nothing to do with what the Romans used. In 1810, Parker's patent expired, and this date marks the start of numerous industrial developments of similar and other natural cements in England, Europe and North America. Notably, its adoption by Brunel in 1824 for the construction of a tunnel under the River Thames offered it a high recognition. But in the course of the century, natural cement lost out to Portland cement with the last UK manufacturer switching to Portland cement in 1890. A separate video examines the chemistry of natural cement. Here, we note that natural cements rely on limestone that must contain a fair amount of clays, typically between 20 and 30%. Calcining such rocks around 1000 degrees Celsius results in a product that develops good binding properties when reacting with water at ambient temperature to produce calcium silicate hydrate, calcium hydroxide, and various calcium aluminate hydrates. In contrast, quicklime, obtained by calcining pure limestone, does not act as a binder by reacting with water. Rather, it produces a putty of slaked lime that must then react with CO2 present in the air to harden. In contrast, and as for natural cement, porcelanic mortars harden in absence of air. In this case, 
the slaked lime putty reacts with pozzolana to produce calcium silicate hydrate. In summary, both natural cement and pozzolanic mortars can harden in absence of air. Natural cements set very rapidly, within about 5 to 10 minutes, but then require much longer times to reach their final strength on the range of several months. These two very different timescales reflect the different reaction rates of the aluminate and silicate phases. Pozzolanic mortars do not set as fast and take an even longer time to reach final strength. Getting back to the rise of natural cements, their faster hardening than lime-based mortar was a clear advantage in reducing risks of freezing in northern climates when winter is coming. Finally, from the perspective of binder efficiency, the carbonation of quicklime increases the solid volume by about 17%, while it is of 36% for pozzolanic mortars and 140% for the dicalcium silicate present in Roman cements. In conclusion, hydraulic lime and natural cements represented an important evolution in the production of mineral binders between pozzolanic mortars and Portland cement. The shortcomings that caused natural cement to lose out to Portland cement were relying on a single raw material, not reaching temperatures high enough for clinkering to take place, and having a too rapid setting combined with a very slow gain of final strength.